Hello and welcome back to the Streamers and Waiver Wire podcast, this one for week 15. And I'm your host, Josh Shepardson. You can follow me on Twitter where I post is at bchat50. And, I mean, injuries have been ugly this year, and they continued this past weekend. Likely going to leave uh, some playoff teams with some holes that need to be filled. And uh, I'm here to help. So, got some plays that I think uh, – Look strong for streamers and a couple of waiver wire ads that shall help bolster some backfields if you're in need of some running back help. Uh, starting with the Juan Harris of the Seattle Seahawks, was owned in 0% of CBS leagues, 0% of ESPN leagues, and 5% of Yahoo leagues when I uh, grabbed the ownership rates yesterday. And uh, the team did sign or re sign, I should say, Bryce Brown who is going to compete for those early down carries as the starter with Dewan Harris. Uh, Brown, the more explosive back of the two. But Brown also has a penchant for putting the football on the ground, something that uh, has cost him jobs elsewhere. And while he's the more exciting back in the back that, um, if he could ever reel in his, his fumble issues, will certainly be one who's fun to watch. Uh It's not a chance that the Seahawks need to take. I think they're going to end up leaning in favor of the guy who they'd actually kept on their roster, Dewan Harris. Harris relieved Thomas Rawls when he uh, suffered his uh, fractured ankle. Um, In last week's contest, I think he'll get the first crack this week, um, if nothing else, because he takes care of the football. With the way Russell Wilson's playing and the way this defense is playing, simply taking care of the football – even if you are just ho-hum on the ground, as Harris has been, I think is going to be enough to get him the nod over uh, Brown. More importantly, this game projects to be a blowout. The Seahawks are the biggest betting favorites of the week at 14.5 points. And uh, if this game turns into the blowout that's expected, Harris, the more sure-handed ball carrier, not the fumbling Bryce Brown, would be my bet for the guy to get the carries here down the stretch and uh, salt away that lead. So, um, if you're deciding between backs, if you're at the top of that waiver heap, Dewan Harris is the back that I would rather have in that backfield. I think he's more likely to get the workload. Fred Jackson lurks as a third down back, but he uh, played fewer snaps than Harris this past week, and Harris was the back that uh, was asked to carry the load, carrying the ball 18 times and uh, compared to just seven carries for Fred Jackson and relief overalls last week. So really good matchup this week, too, against the Browns. Browns have allowed the fourth most rushing yards per game at 131.3 and uh, the seventh most fantasy points to per game to running backs, according to Pro Football Reference. So really good matchup. I would say Harris is a uh, viable flex if he's announced as a starter and has some low RB2 upside uh, thanks to the fact that he should get some volume salting this lead away. So uh, definitely a guy worth grabbing right now, especially if you're a Rawls owner and you just lost Rawls for the remainder of your uh, fantasy season. Another guy who filled in admirably uh, for a uh, feature back who went down that uh, feature back that helped rosters all year, uh, Mark Ingram down for the year on season ending uh, IR. And it was unclear who would emerge in that backfield. It looked like it was probably going to be an RBBC with uh, CJ Spiller getting some touches and Hightower getting some touches as well. Really turned into the Tim Hightower show. 58 offensive snaps for him compared to just 15 for CJ Spiller. Uh, Hightower didn't rack up a lot of yards per carry, uh, rushing for just 85 yards on 28 carries. Um, 85 yards are nice, but on 85 carries, certainly not. Uh, yards per carry to write home about, but really stingy Raven. Uh, I'm sorry, really stingy Buccaneers defense that uh, hasn't allowed of has allowed just 3.4 yards per carry to all backs this year, second lowest in the league. So High Tower certainly not alone in not picking up big chunks of yardage against that defense, but uh, stayed healthy. I mean, carried the load with 28 carries and uh, by holding up for that and, and getting that kind of faith from Sean Payton, you certainly, certainly have to like that against uh, different defenses and not the Buccaneers uh, found the end zone also added a reception for 10 yards was utilized heavily. And uh, the team leaned on Mark Ingram heavily. Looks like Tim Hightower is going to fill that role. And uh, the Lions had been very good against the run, but they were just absolutely embarrassed by uh, 
Todd Gurley this past week, 140, 140 yards rushing on 16 carries, including a pair of touchdowns. Now, I'm not going to say Hightower is even in the same zip code as Todd Gurley. Uh, not trying to make that comparison, but I am going to point out that the Lions are on defense, probably not as good as they look like they were post by uh, somewhere between as good as they looked after the bye and as bad as they looked against Todd Gurley. Hightower should get plenty of touches. And while well, he only caught one pass, uh, he did show in his previous NFL stint that he is a capable pass catching back. 2008 and 2009 with the Cardinals, his first two seasons in the league, he uh, totaled 97 receptions for 655 yards receiving, 665 yards receiving, and he's averaged 6.9 yards per reception for his NFL career. So does have some pass catching chops, I believe, and uh, should touch the ball around 20 times as long as the odds makers are correct. Uh, the Saints, three-point favorites, and at home. Offense plays much better at home. We should put Hightower in some touchdown scoring chances, uh, or at least in position to possibly score some touchdowns, as Breeze has just been light years better at home than on the road. And uh, as long as the game stays close, I'd expect Hightower to get the type of volume that makes him a strong flex or even a low-end RB2 this week. Moving on to the streaming options, and uh, didn't really think I would ever say this, but – Alex Smith looks like a good streaming option, uh, one that isn't going to cost you uh, a win in your fantasy playoffs. Maybe not a guy who's going to single-handedly win you the matchup, but uh, certainly not a little bit better than the game manager that he he has been. Um, still only passing for 233.4 yards per game. Uh, 15 touchdown passes this year are yawn-inducing, so not a big total. But – is a runner and a very good runner, um, averaging 28.2 yards rushing per game with two touchdowns on the ground, also taking care of the football, only four interceptions and three fumbles, so not turning it over a lot. And uh, he's actually taking some chances down the field using his receivers. Albert Wilson had a big game last week. Jeremy Macklin's been playing at a very high level. And uh, the Chiefs face a really bad Ravens defense. They're serving up uh, – 25.5 uh, – I'm sorry. The the Chiefs feature a 25.5 point over under total against a Ravens defense that's serving up a lot of points to opponents. They're not, they're not stopping anybody at this point. They were just absolutely picked apart by Russell Wilson. And uh, – they're just not a defense that, that that can stop teams through the air. Have done a good job on the uh, stopping teams on the ground, but that's all the more reason for Smith to air it out just a little bit more this week. Uh, Smith's ceiling isn't through the roof, but facing a team that's allowed the fourth most fantasy points to fantasy quarterbacks certainly does provide him some ceiling, also elevates his floor quite a bit. So I uh, really think Smith is a safe play against the Ravens this week. Uh, going to the exact opposite end of the spectrum from safe, high floor to Mr. Volatility at wide receiver, and that's Ted Ginn Jr., and it is all or nothing with him. Uh, the last two weeks have been big showings. Last week, uh, in week 14, he totaled two receptions on three targets for 120 yards and two touchdowns, so big, big showing. The week before, he caught five of ten targets for 80 yards and two touchdowns, but has to drop issues, and, uh, I mean, he's had some ugly, ugly games this year. Uh, he has had numerous games where he's failed to reach even 20 yards receiving this year. Um, he had put up a goose egg three weeks ago. So before this two-game stretch of back-to-back to, uh, you know, back to back games where he's caught multiple touchdowns, put up a bagel. And, I mean, that is the downside for Ted Ginn is if he's not catching these long – Touchdown passes, uh, he's a risk to score literally zero points. So uh, the floor is exceptionally low, but the ceiling is actually quite high for him. And if you are an underdog in your fantasy football matchup, you need a guy who can be a potential game changer. Again, is widely available. 65% ownership on CBS, 41.9% ownership on ESPN, 40% ownership on Yahoo. Uh, Greg Olson, not seriously injured on a play that looked like it was very bad. Uh, forced him out of, out of the contest last week, suffering a knee injury. I uh, did undergo an MRI last uh, yesterday, um, but wasn't expected to reveal any damage, and there hasn't been any news out suggesting that there's a serious injury that, that popped up. 
I expected to play this week. Ron Rivera went as far as to say if last week's game was closer, uh, Olsen would have been fine to go back in. But if Olsen's playing at less than 100%, could open the door to a few more touches for Ginn. Since Ginn is such a home run hitter, those few ta- those few extra targets could loom large. So, again, uh, not a guy that, that you should be using if uh, you just need a few points or you're looking for reliability. But if you're looking for some volatility, uh, I mean – if you're looking to take the the daily fantasy GPP approach of uh, swinging for the fences, if that's what you need to do to win your matchup, Gen Jr. is a guy who can hit a home run. Moving on to tight end, uh, Zach Miller is owned in 57% of CBS leagues, 19.4% of ESPN leagues, and 19% of Yahoo leagues. And I do caution, talking about Zach Miller of the Bears, make sure you don't add the wrong Zach Miller. Uh, there is also the Zach Miller tight end who plays for the Seahawks as well. Uh, make sure you're making the right waiver claim if you're looking to fill your uh, tight end hole. Uh, and in his first game, uh, following Martellus Bennett's placement on injured reserve, he uh, showed up uh, five receptions on six targets for 85 yards and a touchdown. Uh, better showing than I expected. I touted him a little bit in daily fantasy games as a value play. Didn't think he was going to quite do enough to warrant uh, tight end one usage this past week in season-long leagues, but I was wrong. He uh, turned in a good game. I scored a touchdown on four of his last six games played, so definitely has some red zone rapport with Jay Cutler. And uh, – could be in line for some more success against the Vikings this week. The Bears are five-point underdogs, which means they're probably going to be playing catch-up. Not going to be able to rely on their uh, duo of talented running backs, Matt Forte and Jeremy Langford, as much as they'd like to. And if they're forced to air it out, some limited options in that passing game from Jay Cutler. It's Alshon Jeffrey and pretty much everybody else. Zach Miller, a little bit better than everybody else. So uh, Zach Miller looking like the number two in that passing attack now. So if you're somebody who... Uh, might be without Tyler Eifer, who lost last week's game with a concussion. If you lost Jimmy Graham for the year, Zach Miller is a good route to go. Uh, not The Vikings aren't giving up a ton of fantasy points to tight ends, but Football Outsiders is unimpressed with their work, and they rank them 25th defending tight ends. So there's a little bit of a disparity there. I do think that uh, Miller has a plus matchup when accounting for uh, the Football Outsiders ranked defending tight ends. Finally, on defense, and uh, I wrote this article prior to – uh, the Monday night football game, but uh, I'm going to stay on board. If you're desperate for a defense and you're looking for someone that's widely available, even after an ugly Monday night football showing from the Dolphins, um, they remain in play as a viable fill-in, and not because of their own work. They do have talent on the defensive side of the football, and Dominican Sue um, and others, but uh, it's more about what the Chargers haven't been able to do lately. Uh, they faced a Chargers team that scored th- exactly three points in their last two games and uh, exactly three points in three of their last four games. So the only game in which they didn't put up uh, just three points in their last four-game stretch was against a really bad Jaguars defense. So that does point out the risk of using a Dolphins team because – I mean, their defense has not been good this year, but the Chargers' offense lacks playmakers with Keenan Allen out. Uh, they haven't been able to really establish the run all year, and uh, they're struggling with turnovers. Uh, they turned the ball over six times while allowing 12 sacks in the, the three games where they scored just three points uh, in their last four. So when they're not going well, they're really not going well. It is also worth mentioning that uh, in those three games where they scored just three points – Two were played against the Chiefs, one against the Broncos. Obviously, those defenses are considerably better than the Dolphins, but with a lack of playmakers right now on the Chargers team, I do think that if you're desperate at defense, the Dolphins do make for a viable ad, especially if you're in like a 14-team league. Um, If you're in a 12-team league, they're really on the fringe of being a uh, viable streaming option, but not a lot available out there. So definitely do think they're a play against a struggling Chargers team. And that's going to wrap things up for this week's podcast. Good luck in your fantasy football playoff matchups. Check out fantasyfootballcafe.com for some articles and more video podcasts the rest of the week that will hopefully help push you over the top and get you that that much-needed victory in Week 15. Till next week, good luck.